computer. All right, let's get started and talk about pinhole photography. I'm really excited to talk about this topic. Um, I will hop over, share my screen with you guys and show you my presentation. Okay, so here we go. Can you see the screen? Can you see the yes. screen? Yes! That's a big win. Um, please unmute, <laughs> unmute yourself for now. Um, we will um, go back to questions after the presentation. So pinhole photography, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with pinhole photography. If you have tried it in the past, I um, want to start with some basics for you. Um, when I um, tried out pinhole photography the first time, that was, uh, I think, a little over a year ago, 2021. No, almost two years ago, um, because Lens Baby decided to come out with a um, pinhole um, lens. And that was quite interesting. Um, okay. So since this is a very small and intimate group, um, we only have one new person, Sarah, that's you. So just for you and everybody else who is, um, watching the recording later on on YouTube, um, a little bit about me, um, as you can tell by my accent, probably by now I'm German. I was born and raised in Germany. Um, but have spent the last 17 years in America and the last, let me do the math quickly, seven years in California. And I fell in love with um, the California lifestyle. I started an Instagram account um, back in 2012, maybe, um, that I named California Lover. And believe it or not, this is why I take the pictures that I do, because I have this account. And I was like, what can I do with it? Um, and things fell into place. It was like, I like California. I love the palm trees and I love the ocean and everything. So it's a little funny when I tell the story because in a way it's like I started backwards. Um, I had this idea first before I had the actual work that um, went with it. But this is how it happened. Um, I um, teach uh, photography workshops. Um, I do this group for now. And um, I will talk a little bit about my workshops at the end of the presentation. Um, besides that, I also offer photo walks. Um, I have one scheduled for later this afternoon. I'm really excited because the sun, uh, the wildflowers are so beautiful right now. And um, yeah, I, I cannot wait to do that. Take the camera and the lens babies and the filters and whatever and go out and have some fun with it. Um, if you are interested in creative techniques, um, there is a self-paced workshop that I wrote um, last year and that's available at Click Photo School. So if you want to learn more about creative techniques, that's a great way to start. Um, if you have more questions, if you need the link, let me know. Um, it's also part of the um, featured section in our Facebook group. All right, with that being said, let's get started. Talk about pinhole photography. Um, all the images that I am sharing in this presentation were taken um, with a pinhole um, optic. So when you talk about pinhole photography, we cannot really talk about a lens because technically you don't use a lens for pinhole photography. Pinhole photography is also known as camera obscura um, and it um, is considered the origin of modern photography. So the way pinhole photography was discovered, I found that very interesting, um, was basically by accident. And I want to show you this picture. So um, it is said that people might have been in um, dungeons and then there might have been a little hole and through the little hole, um, a little bit of light could come in under certain conditions um, that would um, create or project the outer reality on, on the wall of the hole. And this is probably the origin of our photography. So then people found out um, how to use it in a little more um, planned way. Like this is a good example of a, this is actually a picture from 1645, where you see that someone is working with the idea of having a dark chamber and then having this little hole and how um, through this hole, the reality gets projected on that wall. And I found another picture to illuminate, uh, to illustrate that even further. So what happens is you have this um, um, scenery on the outside, and then you have this dark chamber, and you have this hole, and through the hole, the light goes through and then uh, creates a projection of the outer reality. It's upside down, that's the uh, physical law. Um, and this is how pinhole photography works. Um, I found out there are various ways for us as uh, modern photographers to use this concept. So um, 
uh, there are three ways that I um, found out I haven't tried them all in person, but um, I did a little research. So number one, you can, with very little um, material, you can build your own um, pinhole camera. Um, all you need is um, film, a dark box, um, cut a hole into the dark box, and then set the camera somewhere. Um, you need to figure out what your right exposure time might be. Um, the hole has to be pretty small, and then the film in the back of this box will be illuminated and will develop. That's quite interesting. I did that many years ago with my son. It was a project in school. Um, I think it was maybe early high school times, um, and it was a lot of fun. If you're not into this do-it-yourself, um, then you can also um, buy um, kits. I had a look. Um, the film company Ilford is selling these kits. I think they run about $150, so you don't have to build your box. It comes with some instructions, uh, which is helpful. Um, you don't have to cut the hole. The hole will be the right size. Um, and the film is coming with this box and then you have the instructions you just follow and then you can play with pinhole photography. If you are interested in doing pinhole photography as a um, modern digital photographer, there are also options. Um, one that I have tried in the past is um, it was delivered and created by Lens Baby. So that was uh, roughly two years ago. They came out with the pinhole optic, and they call it camera obscura. It came um, in two focal lengths, 50 millimeter and 60 millimeter. Um, I tried the 50 millimeter for most of the images that I will show. And then later on, I also tried the 60 millimeters. They um, are two very different optics that create very different um, styles, I would say. All right, so when we talk about pinhole photography, um, there are a few things that I had to learn the hard way. Um, so I come from photography that mostly works with wide open um, apertures. I love playing with filters. I love playing with prisms. And obviously that was the first thing I did, right? I put the um, lens on my camera and then I wanted to go out and take pictures. That's not how that went. Um, I had a really rough time with the whole pinhole photography idea because the first thing that I needed to understand is that you have these crazy f-stops. So um, if you want to shoot wide open with the um, with pinhole photography, um, the smallest on the lens baby is f32. Um, you read that correctly, f32. So our normal lenses, they stop at f22. So 32 is already really small. And then the next lens opening on the lens baby um, pinhole optic is f46. Then um, depending on which model you have, um, it ends with f90 or f161. Um, I assume that you're familiar with the with the laws of um, photography. So if you work with these small f stops, you can imagine that you have to compensate somehow, right? So that means that even during bright daylight you need to raise your ISO up really high. So I started using this lens and um, yeah, it was mind blowing for me. I was like, whoa, what am I doing here? Um, so this, this is an example of a picture that I took, one of the first ones, very early pictures um, with the uh, pinhole camera obscura with the 50 millimeter. Um, the next thing that I found new um, and also very frustrating Normally in photography, we try to achieve proper focus. So something in the image needs to be focused in focus. Um, that's not what you can expect when you work with a pinhole camera. I mean, it depends. When you build your own, the pictures might be a tad more in focus than when you work, let's say, with the um, pinhole, with the lens baby pinhole camera. Um, it took me a while to... Um, accept that kind of look because even though I like dreamy images, I don't know, there was something to it that really puzzled me in the beginning and that I had a hard time with. So as you can tell, I had a hard time because I mean, who comes up with the idea of using a pinhole, <laughs> pinhole optic um, for action shots? So I just took it everywhere. Um, This is my daughter here um, at our school and she was playing with the dogs and tossing a ball. And in the beginning, I thought that's a great idea to try it out. And then later I realized, oh boy, this is, well, this is not a good idea. 
So if you can get over the fact that um, the small apertures really force you to slow down, then you get something that's really beautiful. Um, it creates dreamlike images, um, a very different, very soft and surreal um, look. I, I ended up loving it, but it took me um, a while to get used to it. Another thing that I love in my photography is shooting against the sun, shooting during golden hours. So that was the next mistake I made. I assumed, okay, all right, let's 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 take this thing out and um, golden hour against the sun. Well, uh, I wasn't a look, I wasn't a fan of the look. So this is the sun coming in and you see these dots. Um, it looks very technical um, and um, the, the whole um, colors, they are very harsh. Um, so that has nothing to do with what we are normally used um, when we shoot at 2.8 and use our amazing backlit um, techniques. But once I um, adjusted my mindset and realized, all right, it's not, it's definitely not made to take action shots. It's also not made to be used to shot, uh, shoot against the sun. What can I do with it? And I started um, doing some research and I um, looked at what people have done in the past when they did pinhole photography. I looked at the history and I found out that the long exposure times that you need, because all of a sudden you are shooting at one of, over 161, um, they can uh, look really good on slowly moving subjects like water. So this is the ocean. And that was probably an exposure time. Of color. You can see the color. So it was around sunset. Um, so this must have been something three minute exposure. Um, and I started liking that. Um, and what I also loved is, so it can also look really good when clouds are moving. In California, we mostly have blue skies. So I couldn't get any clouds in the picture. But I have seen images where people... Um, use that and they had these super long exposure times and the clouds look, like started looking like um, like a veil um, so you don't need a neutral density filter to achieve this effect when you do pinhole photography and that is really beautiful um, once I got over the fact that the normal things are not the things that I can do with pinhole photography I started um, investigating and so the next thing obviously that I wanted to try was um, double exposures you can do double exposures and that is quite interesting because um, there are a lot of things that can be used as an overlay so this image here was created um, by it's my neighbor's house here and the second image that I took on um, this is rain on a glass glassy um, surface it was actually a sunroof so I overlaid these two images in camera and voila I had a lot of fun with that and that was um, something that I didn't expect and the more I tried um, the more I found out that panel photography really um, has a way of unleashing creativity because it breaks with all the the um, common laws that we are used to and that we learn as photographers um, it really makes you think you know it really makes you use the knowledge that you have acquired over time but I realized I was so used to this routine of okay backlit image this will look good sun is partly hidden um aperture 2.8 corresponding ISO and here we go um and I really started enjoying that I had to um rethink my approach um I tried it in many different settings so I even tried st street photography with it um, I wouldn't say it's the best use case. So this image, if we would zoom in and even without zooming in, you see it already, this is not sharp. And um, there, my, my question in the end is why would I take this image if I can take a much better image um, with a wider open aperture and a faster shutter speed? Um, so same here, you can tell that it was a slow um, shutter speed because this is a bicycle that's driving at the beach. Um, so it looks, um, you can tell that I was moving with the with the camera. So there's all this movement in the sand. And then these um, words here, you cannot read them because they all um, started to blur out. I was following, I was panning actually <laughs> the bicycle. So it was a very lucky shot. Um, so then I went to the desert one day and um, there the uh, pinhole photography, the pinhole lens or pinhole optic or however you want to call it actually started to shine and started to make sense to me. Um, but even when I say it's not the best use case for street photography, 
it really makes you think about your composition because you cannot get away with effects anymore. You know, with, with um, fast photography, you might be able to get away um, in using nice colors that go well together or um, just wait somewhere where there's light and shadow. So with pinhole photography, since you need much more time, you start thinking more about your the, the elements that go into an image. And um, it really helps you to dissect an image and the composition and everything. And I enjoy that. Um, this is an image that I took when I got my hands on the Obscure, the 60 millimeter. Um, and that's a use case that I really um, think is, is kind of fun. Um, so it's not sharp, definitely not. Nothing in this image is in focus. I mean, if you look at the windows in the background, we could say those are maybe in focus. But what I liked is this was um, shot late afternoon. It was kind of bright. Um, how you can have all these moving elements in the image and it doesn't really um, take a lot of effort of doing that because if you shoot at, I think this was shot at 1 f90 probably, um, this, no matter what you do, the shutter will be slow and um, I like it when, when things are moving. So yeah, that was fun. And here I was playing again with double exposures. Um, we can debate if this is a great picture and um, if you need the optic for that, but it's for me not so much about the pictures that resulted from the shot. It's more about what how I started to see the world when I um, did pinhole photography for, I think I did it for like three months and then I was done with it. But um, it really made me a better photographer and it um, honed my eye. I really enjoyed that. Um, Going back to beach photography, I touched that already a little. Um, how, what I really like is how the water looks so um, soft. That's um, um, a beautiful look, but also to be at the beach with your pinhole, whatever pinhole you bring, um, it really makes you slow down. And that was beautiful because um, this image looks simple and perfect and um, it's one in a series, so I took probably 40 images on that afternoon. And um, I realized the first ones, they were really, I didn't pay attention to the composition. I wasn't there. And the frustration that comes with pinhole photography, it's a little bit like um, breathing. You know, when you do breathing um, therapy to be in the moment, it's it's very similar with pinhole photography. It, forces you to be in the moment because the images don't just come to you. It's not easy. It's hard work. It's focus. It's like concentrating. It's thinking about the elements in the image that you need to tell a compelling story. Oh, and self-portraits. So that was another idea that I had for whatever reason. I thought it would look really cool to do a self-portrait at the beach. Oh boy, that was really it was hard let me tell you that um so it looks simple and it looks effortless but it was not so the reason why i wanted to go to the beach is because i wanted the, the the beautiful movement of the water in the image um and i brought a dress and i wanted the movement of the dress in the image um but going back and forth between the camera and making sure that the waves don't knock my camera over and people were around me and all these things <laughs> But um, yeah, I had a great time. It was it was fun. At least I got one image that I kind of liked. And here's another example for um, slow moving and slow shutter images. All right, and with that, I come already to my conclusion. It helps you to create what you feel. And I find that sometimes difficult um, when I, let's say I use my camera, my phone camera. Um, then it's not so much about what I feel, it's about what is happening and what do I want to capture. And it's typically a moment, you know, it's like, or it's a memory, something like something is happening, uh, my daughter is laughing, or my husband is looking at me in a certain way, and I'm like, oh, I want to capture that moment. But it's not so much about how I feel in that moment. And um, for me, um, pinhole photography really um, helped me to um, capture the world in, a, in an unconventional way. And eventually I fell in love with the, with the things that you can do when you have the longer shutter speed available. So this was an image that I took um, while moving the camera. And um, that was I, I just loved how that was at the um, ocean where I normally are. And I had never taken an image like this before. I love the play of the yellow and the blue. And um, I would not have done that if I had um, a normal camera on me. So that made me think, like, what else can I do? 
um, oh yeah, and this is um, my, that was probably my favorite session um, with, with my whole pinhole exploration. Um, at one point I was so frustrated with the pinhole um, technique that I decided, okay, I will give it one last try. And that weekend I went with my family to the desert and I asked my daughter if she would model for me. And believe it or not, um, those are my favorite pictures that I ever took. I just love, love, love the movement in the images and the, the fact that it is so unpredictable and the look is so, so new. It's something that I had never seen before. So those are a few more from that outing on my plate with double exposures. These three here are double exposures. I think even that one is a double exposure. And um, I just love the look, the, the um, glowy look. It's just beautiful. Okay, so I personally, um, if, if that is something that interests you, I use the um, Obscura 60 millimeter and then oh, it's missing the 50 millimeter. Um, I like them both for different reasons. I think the 16 is good for um, landscape, um, street photography. Um, but interesting enough, even though I wasn't having an easy time with the 50 millimeter, eventually that got became my favorite pinhole optic. And I use it in conjunction with my Canon R5. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, an important announcement that I wanted to make today. Um, I decided to do an in-person workshop this September in Los Angeles. And um, I wanted to invite you guys. Um, registration opened yesterday. And I'm going to do this with my um, amazing friend, Lucy Ketchum. She is a flower photographer. If you haven't seen her work, I recommend that you uh, check her up. Um, check her out. <laughs> Um, her yeah, look up on Instagram. It's Lucy Ketchum. It's um, one word, and um, yeah, her flower photography is just um, stunning. And um, we opened registration yesterday, and um, yeah, we cannot wait. It will be a small group here in Los Angeles. We will do flowers and beaches, and everything will be in person. And it's a great opportunity. So I hope to see you there. If you want or need something lens baby, here is my discount code. I share that at the end of every presentation, W Recon, that's my last name with a W in the front. Um, it doesn't work for new launches, but it works on everything else and gives you 10%. All right, if you have any more questions, don't shy away from contacting me, send me your questions. There is no dumb question. I'm happy to answer either on Instagram under California Lover or email me directly, californialoverphoto at gmail.com. And there is a dot that doesn't belong there. Sorry, it's California Lover Photo. There's no dot. And with that, I'm ending the official part of this presentation today. Thank you so much for being here. And um, I cannot wait to see your beautiful pin oil photography this month. All right, guys, we are back. It's hopefully was fun for you. Um, do you have any questions? Hey, it's Mary. I do. Okay, I, I, Mary, thought I, I thought I read somewhere you could drill a hole into a lens cap. Yeah, you can do that. You can okay. totally do that. Yes. And could you also take like a um, matte black piece of cardboard and make different size holes and you could slide it over? And just hold that against your lens? I think you can, but... Um, might have some light leak, right? Yeah, the more light gets in, the shorter your exposure time. So that might be a little tricky. Like I said, I'm not a very hands-on person. I'm not sure I would I would even have tried pinhole photography without mm -hmm. having uh, the chance to um, beta test With the, the optics, yeah. products. Um, so I found it interesting. I did it once with my son, but he was in charge. He was the one right, right, right. The pinhole camera. And it was fun doing it on that day. Um, but I don't know too much about the technical um, aspects of building your own. But um, I would recommend um, Googling it. I did that. And there are tons of blogs out there. And um, um, another way to get more information, if, if this is something that interests you, um, just put in the hashtag pinhole into mm -hmm. um, Instagram. It's amazing. So many um, reels come up and people do so many fun things. So there are, uh, I mean, there's so much inspiration out there. Cool. Yeah. yeah I think my husband has made them before. So I just mm -hmm. need to talk about it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I love well your work. <laughs> All right. Yes. I just yeah. wanted, hi. Um, I just wanted to 
mention I beta tested the 50 millimeter obscura and that's when I learned how to clean my own sensor oh yeah that's <laughs> such a good point go ahead yes you're right. yeah so I just wanted to mention that for anyone who hasn't used the lens baby obscura that you uh, really see every single dust spot on your sensor True. True. everything so yeah. and, and Yuta, unlike you, I didn't really learn to embrace uh, the Obscura, but I think I'm going to give it another try. Yeah, so, good. Yeah. Okay, so we are in for this for this month, right? I mean, we have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, you're right. <laughs> I will. I just cracked this out. Okay. Yeah, you have it. Perfect. Okay, I see. We need to do this. Have you used it much, Leticia? I tried and I was um, stymied by the, <laughs> by the effects. So I'm, I was thinking I needed to go someplace else to do this, but I'm noticing that I think I have a big spot that won't come out on the on the lens of this, on the glass of this lens. Anyway. Okay. All but right. I'll, I'll figure it out. So try if, if you, if you want to do pinhole photography and you have tried it in the past and it wasn't fun, my way out was to dedicate more time yeah well and yeah don't, and don't switch between lenses that's another thing because i went um through the images that i have taken um during the time when i was beta testing it and i i could tell i was frustrated at times so at times i would go back to my fuji and just do some random prism pictures just for the fun you know um and then i remembered oh yeah that time yes that was yeah i was kind of frustrated but it paid out, you know, it was in the end, I, I really liked it. And I wouldn't want to miss the experience. Yeah, I, I, I've i learned that you have to go out with one lens and Definitely. dedicate that day to the one yes. lens and, and, and see what you get. And at see least it. a day, I would go even further. I think you should if you have For a week, actually, lens, so lenses, a, even a month, you know, it's yeah. like no time. And it's, it's a good amount to really learn a lens and understand what it can do for you. Yeah, this one I was ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it was almost, I wasn't sure. Should I should I do this as a as a um topic for us? And I was like, why not? We will learn something. Um Sarah, do you have you ever tried um pinhole photography? I actually I took a photography class in college and mm -hmm. our first assignment is we had to build a pinhole camera. Yeah. Um and I now I'm gonna have to dig out the image. I have we used the photographic paper mm -hmm. um and developed it in the dark room and I built a pinhole camera out of an oatmeal carton. Mm -hmm. Um so I still have that somewhere. Oh. Uh but yeah, that's like I said, I have the lens baby, the older lens that's the insert into the um composer. Uh, so I'm going to have to break that out. I'm hoping we're pretty overcast and may end up getting some rain. So I'm hoping we get some sunny days in the next week to be able to. Yeah, I hope I, I say that. That's a good point, Sarah. You need sun. So mm -hmm. that's that's the one time where you can't get away with with um at the end of the day. It just doesn't work. An overcast day is terrible. Pick the sunny days, lunchtime. That's the yeah. that's the time when pinhole photography starts to shine. Mm -hmm. And what's your composition? I mean, everything is also something I should have said during the uh, presentation. Everything will be in focus. It is what it is. F64, everything will be in focus. Everything matters. Which is a great exercise. All right. More questions? Are we, are we good for today? Okay. All right. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank hope you. you have a great weekend and um, I see you in a month again. I, I guess I forgot to show the slide of our next meeting. I think it's June 2nd. Um, I hope to see you there and um, I hope to see many of your pictures. Um, if you're frustrated, I mean, post them anyway and talk about it. This is also something that is a good conversation to have in the group. Mm. Yep. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye.